Hey guys, how are you? So uh, I'm going to start this vlog in a, in a con unconventional, unconventional way. There we go. Unconventional way. First of all, I bought these markers to do some whiteboard markering and uh, eraser board markering, and they smell bad. It's weird. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to go make a tea. In the next vlog, I'm uh, going to go over a bunch of the YouTube comments. Some of them are pretty funny. And some of them will be useful to people, I think. So if you want to become a freelancer in programming, or if you want to be a freelancer developer, which language should you learn? This is a question I get all the time. And I keep answering it from different points of view. I'm trying to hammer home a basic idea about development in general. And that idea is that you have to look at the market around you to make that decision. Every different region, you know, if you're in the States or if you're in Eastern Europe or if you're in India, things will change. But I think there's some consistencies there. So for instance, C++ is not going to be the language if for the freelancer. I don't think there's any C++ jobs for freelancers. So if you're going to do C++ coding, you have to expect you're going to be working for a company. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some people prefer that. Some people don't like that. It depends what you want to do. But if you want to get into freelancing, you have to first look at the local market and make the decision based on what you see in the local market. So how do you look at the local market? You look at indeed.com as, as, as an example of a site. You look what people, who people are hiring and you see if they're hiring as freelancers or not. You can look on sites that uh, hire freelance developers out there. And there's many out there. I'm sure a lot of people can suggest them. And you can start checking that out if you want to work remotely as a freelancer. That said, there are a few tried and true technologies and languages that's going to give you a ton of freelance work. Number one, the web stack. The web stack, of course. Huge. That starts with HTML5 and CSS, CSS3. Just so you know, in case you're wondering, you have HTML and HTML5. At one point, there was a difference, I suppose, because HTML5 was this big leap forward from the previous version of HTML. And so in 2002 range, 2013 range, that time frame, people looked at HTML5 and HTML as being kind of different things because HTML5 loaded a huge amount of power into HTML. These days, though, or 2017, well, a few a week or so from 2018, it's HTML5, that's it, HTML5. All the browsers understand and process HTML5 perfectly. The nerds will say the browsers support HTML5, so HTML is HTML5. CSS is CSS3. Again, CSS3 was considered different because it was a big leap forward in terms of the tech, so everybody did, everybody considered it differently. Now it's CSS. Like my beginner's HTML and CSS course, they teach HTML5 and CSS3. So my beginner's CSS HTML course is an HTML5 course. And at the, at the end of the day, I'm changing the title, by the way, because I call it beginner's HTML. What it should be, it should have been something like beginner to pro in HTML, because it covers everything. Same thing with the CSS, same thing with the JavaScript, same thing with my PHP course, etc. Anyway, so when you're looking at freelancing, you have to consider the technology. C++, I don't think there's going to be any freelancing jobs there. Where all the freelance money is, is still in the web stack. Why? Because every single business just about has to have some sort of web site. Yes, some will use things like Wix, but that's only a temporary thing. I think uh, when companies get serious about their websites, they're going to be looking in custom jobs. Another area you might want to consider in terms of freelancing, of course, is WordPress. WordPress is huge. You've got a huge number of business sites out there. I think something like 30% or 35% of the world's websites, the world's websites are on WordPress. 
And that means a lot of these business owners are going to need WordPress developers, people who know WordPress well, who can configure it, lock it down, who can install plugins, who can modify, modify and add new themes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of activity in the WordPress space for WordPress developers. So in my interactive web developer course, I do give you the key coding but training that you need for WordPress. That's HTML5, CSS3, a little bit of JavaScript. Well, we have a complete JavaScript course in PHP, but if you're working with WordPress, you just need a little JavaScript. Uh, some PHP if you want to get into a theme creation and so forth. And then we have a theme creating course. So uh, there you go. So you have to know your way around WordPress just a little bit. Isn't that difficult? But if I get enough comments about that, I'll put it. I used to have one, you know, a WordPress course, but WordPress changes every so often. So I haven't updated it because I think most people can get around WordPress. But if you want a WordPress basics course, how to install it and uh, just the basics in terms of how to set it up and so on, then I can put something out very quickly for you guys if you can't find anything else on the web. I tend to concentrate on the core programming and the business end of the skills training because that's what's lacking out there. So, uh, but sometimes when I get the man, I can crack out something like that that uh, could be pretty useful to you guys. Anyway, so back to uh, freelancing. Yeah, so freelancing, you got to look at local opportunities. You can look online. You got to consider the languages. When you look at the local opportunities, what you're probably going to see is that there's going to be lots of opportunities for the web stack, the web stack developers. Uh, you won't see much opportunity for freelance in, in uh, C++, C Sharp, Java. I doubt it because those languages tend to be involved in projects where you're going to have larger companies where you're going to have full-time staff doing that. Python, you can find some work in freelance in Python. There's no question about that. You may get called in to build some web scrapers or maybe build a Python-based web app with Django or Flask or some other framework, etc., etc. So, yeah, freelancing is still uh, hugely dominated by the web stack meaning the web languages, and building websites and web apps, WordPress, Druma, Drupal, and uh, some Python as well. You may have some Ruby, Ruby on Rails as well, although more serious companies will get involved in that. In the business world, 90% of business, well, not 80, 80% of businesses are small and medium-sized businesses. Small and medium-sized businesses are far more likely to use PHP-based web apps or websites, WordPress-based sites, which is PHP, Drupal than anything else. When you get into very large organizations, they're going to be doing C++ or if they're doing web stuff, they're going to be doing Java web or .NET web. And again, it's very regional specific. A lot of the young nerdlings, web developers there, they have this, this uh, negative disposition with regards to PHP. They don't like PHP because they think PHP is what PHP was 10 years ago. PHP today is every bit as sophisticated and as capable as all the modern languages out there and frameworks out there, no question. But there's this bias against it, this prejudice against it for some reason by the nerds, but not by the companies who need PHP developers. So I was actually just talking to a recruiter who called me up and the thing that she said that it's so hard to find competent PHP developers, so, so hard. There's such a big demand. That's one of the niche. This is like this giant niche in the programming world, in the development world. PHP developer, WordPress developer, because everybody wants to jump into AI or they want to jump into uh, Java or they want to jump into Python, which is great. There's this huge gap for PHP developers, which means a lot of money to be made because there's a lot of crappy PHP developers out there. But if you could be the good one, one of the good ones, then, uh, well, even if you wanted a crappy one, there's probably a ton of work for you out there. So, yeah. I think that's pretty much covers it. A bit of a meandering vlog. Again, I do these vlogs and I present similar information from different perspectives because when you're a noob, young nerdling, you may not know what the particular buzzword is. You may not know exactly how to ask or what question to ask to get the answer that you need. And so that's why I present things from a different point of view. So if you're hearing this, you're going, yeah, Steph, you talked about this 20 videos ago or 10 videos ago or five videos ago. Yeah, I did. But again, I'm trying to present from different points of view to reach the largest audience possible. 
and you know, it's good for me and it's good for them as well. So everybody benefits. So that's the magic of uh, the YouTube. You can just press stop if it's not for you. All right, that's pretty much it. Cheers. Okay, guys, it is uh, December 19th, four in the afternoon. I ate at noon, but I did not have breakfast. I had one coffee at a tea, and I'm going on one of my f- semi-fast tonight, today. What does that mean tonight? I might have a small bowl of granola with raisins and almond milk, small bowl, and I won't eat until tomorrow morning. So there you go. If you want to join me in the fast, you know, you fast up before the holiday if you're in the, the West and you're doing the Christmas stuff or the holiday thing where you get the big meals, it's a good time to do a little fast, clean the body out a, a little, lose four or five, not four or five pounds, lose two or three pounds, and then when you go to the Christmas meal, you won't uh, come out plumper, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm inviting you to join me as I do my I don't know what you're going to call it, 18-hour, 20-hour fast. And uh, yeah, you'll feel like pretty stressed out at first, but then it just calms down. All right, ciao, ciao.